Okie dokie, let's do this. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, and welcome to another Maya Sound webinar. How's the transmission? Am I audible? Am I visible? All good? Excellent. Uh, happy to hear that. Uh, today is going to be a very exciting, uh, exciting case study. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get this show on the road, as they say. Um, I will start sharing my screen, and uh, let's have a look at the uh, keynote presentation. So today we're going to do a case study of a uh, Avicii tribute concert. Um, very special occasion as we're about to discover um, lots of interesting stuff to talk about. But before doing so, uh, before doing so, let's go over the Zoom video communication platform that we like to use for conducting these um, webinars. And that means that in front of you, you're likely to have a window in front of you like the one you see right now. Um, if you would like to see who else is joining you on the call, please click on the participants button, in which case a window pops up on the right side showing you your fellow attendees, those that are joining us today. Um, we encourage you to ask questions. I will moderate today's call. We have two guest lectures and uh, I will moderate today's call. Uh, and that means that if you have a question, please uh, raise your hand. And in order to do so, uh, there's a gray button at the bottom of the screen, which you can click. It says raise hand. And uh, whenever you do that, a blue hand icon pops up in the corner of my eye, informing me that you are about to ask a question. Now, in order to ask the question itself, we encourage you to make use of the chat feature. Um, in order to activate the chat feature or, or make it visible, there's this blue I balloon icon. And uh, if you click on the balloon icon using your mouse or uh, trackpad, then the right side window splits in half, bringing up a new window showing the chat. Uh, at the bottom of this window, you can enter a message um, for everyone to read. Uh, that being said, if you see a uh, fellow colleague, family member or friend among the attendees, then you can also message that person in private. So be sure to raise your hand and notify us of your, uh, in, <laughs> your, your incoming question and make sure of the chat function to do so. Of course, um, for those that are familiar with our format, we're currently also simulcasting um, at the uh, Meyer Sound User Community Facebook Live group. Uh, welcome to you as well. The group is growing at a steady pace. Currently, uh, it has 8,850 members and rising. So welcome to you as well. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to look at another, another example of uh, how the tool set, our turnkey solution from design to deployment, how the tool set, the precision tool set has been used uh, in this uh, memorial service, so to speak. Um, very uh, special, um, special occasion. And that means that without further ado, I'm very much uh, honored to introduce a fellow Meyer Sound colleague, uh, Thijs. Thijs, are you on the call? Yes, I am. I'm here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Thijs is with Texaco Sport and he was present during the event. So he will be one of, um, of today's guest lectures. We will also be uh, joined by Anton. Anton is a freelance system technician that was also present uh, during the event. Uh, this is a guest uh, from, uh, of Thijs. Uh, Anton, are you with us? Hello. Excellent. Happy to hear you guys uh, could make it. Awesome. So without further ado, uh, welcome, Thijs and Anton. Uh, I'm, I, I'd like to say, take it away. And uh, if I remember correctly, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, watch a short introduction video explaining what this tribute concert was all about. We're in uh, Friends Arena, Stockholm, and we're doing the Avicii tribute concert tonight. So today, all, all profits from this show goes to the Team Berling Foundation, and they support uh, organizations working with mental health issues and suicide prevention. So this production is a big production in a very, very big venue. Our biggest challenge was that we only had basically 36 hours to set it all up because of uh, a big show that was in the arena right before us. So everybody had to get in and load in in the same time. 
Yeah, it's a challenge, but right now we're, we're getting there. All is up, programming is left. It's quite a difficult arena since it's huge and uh, there's a lot of dampening in it. So it takes a lot of effort from the speaker system to deliver the power and, and the clarity that we need. The production has gone excellent. We've been ahead of schedule and the result is amazing. We're quite a big crew of beer riggers from all over Scandinavia, and it's a collaboration between uh, Bright Sweden and Bright, Bright Norway and Meyer Sound. It's a huge setup. I mean, we're doing a full supply here, where we're supplying both the LED, uh, the video, and the lights and the sound. So we're doing a full production here on the Avicii Tribute Concert. And this is what we do to support the effort towards uh, strengthening research on mental health that we know that the foundation after uh, Vichy will uh, spend its money on. There's been 55,000 plus tickets sold, so it's, it's going to be full house. The system design was approached in the beginning by Bright Group, and then it turned towards Maya Sound and said, can you help us finish the design? And I said, yes, I can tweak it. The mains are done with Leos and underhang lions, and the sides is Leo and underhang lions. The 270 is 22 leopards in each hang, so it's a mix of leopard, lion and Leo with the 1100 sub. So the mix of the Leo family speakers here has helped a lot because the Leo has to throw, so we can push the first delay row with downstage a bit more. And the leopards, as the 270 hangs, it's worked great. And we also have uh, leopards as front fills, so the transition between the mains and front fills is it's excellent. And it's been easy to achieve. We are using the new version of Compass with the Milan software. The ABB network was fast and easy to set up and it worked as it should do. No errors, no faults. We have just done the Vici tribute show with a very large band. About 128 inputs, so it was, to say the least, quite busy. <laughs> It was great, and I think a great tribute because this would have been a great thing for him to do, and he would have eventually uh, would have come to do exactly what we've done this evening. I started working with Tim uh, when he did the uh, the True album, and uh, I kind of got brought into this whole family. I carried on working with him throughout sort of his DJ career and right up until his last gig at Ashwire. And from front of house engineer, I used to do set up monitors and, and basically just take care of him, look after him, set and just make sure he was, he was happy, you know. I, I thought it performed remarkably well. The vocals came through, shone through brilliantly. The bottom end was good and controlled. Also, my favourite thing is just having more delays than you can throw a stick at, because obviously when you've got uh, noise constrictions and, and you, know, you can only mix to like 100 or 97 dB, you just want a distributed sound system that's got speakers everywhere, and then you're not pushing the main system, everything's just ticking over, you've got headroom for days, and that makes the best sound. Wow, 36 hours to pull that off. Uh, amazing. So, um, Thijs and Anton, who were the major players in this uh, event? Uh, we heard Meyer Sound, we heard Bride Group. Um, am I missing somebody? Yeah, maybe the, the Team Bride Foundation. So. Right. Let's look at that. The um, Foundation, which is the uh, initiator of, uh, of this event. Yeah, the, uh, the event was. It was a two-part event. It started out, the first part was a EDM set with various DJs, and then it was a 30-piece band and then string section. But mostly it was all about the Team Berlin Foundation, or it was all about the Team Berlin Foundation. Uh, after the passing of Avicii, his parents started the foundation, and, uh, and all the profits from the show will go to the foundation's efforts to support organizations which addresses mental health needs and uh, suicide prevention. 
Excellent. It was, all, it was also a way of realizing Tim's dream of having a big band playing his songs in front of a huge audience. I see. And I take it the Berglin Foundation until today uh, continues to do so, um, yeah. which, is, which is amazing. Excellent. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the venue? Yeah, yeah. So the venue was uh, Ferns Arena, located just north of Stockholm. Uh, it's the home of the Swedish football team, and uh, as well as a local club and uh, various touring acts and whatnot. Uh, it's huge, as you see on the picture, or the animation. Uh, and it's known to be quite trouble, troublesome for, for its size. It's 58,000 tickets sold for this event. But also it has a lot of dampening built into the bleachers which of course can be a good thing, but, but it takes a lot of effort for, for the speaker system to deliver punch, punch and clarity to 58,000 people. Wow, that is a huge amount of people. But um, you know, theoretically, the venue can house even more, right? Yeah, I think the capacity is 65,000, but uh, then you probably need a really small stage. Wow, 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 wow. And 58,000, Plus, that was on this event is the is the record for biggest stadium in Scandinavia. Very impressive. Um, maybe we can look at some dimensions and some equipment numbers. Yeah, let's go through the equipment for this particular show. We use sixty four Leos and one hundred twenty eight line amps, which is a ninety degree box, and twenty eight line W, which is a wider box version of the Lion, and fifty six Leopard and seventy eight. 1100 LFC. We used this amount of Lion because of the TPL free firmware update that adds uh, two and a half dB additional headroom to the Lion speaker. So we could actually use the Lion for some of the delays, or most of the delays actually was Lion. So yeah, it was a Excellent. good thing. And we also for this. Uh, we use 24 Galileo devices, which is 19 galaxies and five Callistos that was running all the systems. So yeah, it's a pretty huge setup. And all of that was Milan AVB, right? All galaxies was running Milan AVB for the first That's time. Actually. Right, for the first time. Yeah, with Excellent. the Milan software. Wow. I think it was the first time in Sweden. And the biggest show in Sweden ever done with Milan software. So, yeah. Okay. So let, let's have a look at the system design for this venue. And yeah. <clears throat> Just to give you a heads up on, on how big this is, you can see here a drawing of the venue with the speakers inside. And you see this is 120 meter from stage to the end of the floor, and it's 40 meters wide. And this is the only the floor you the see. Floor so only. Wow. Floor only. So yeah, quite big venue. Yeah. So if you go to section view of this, you actually see here. You see stage. You see front of house position. And sixty meters. Sixty meters, approximately sixty meters. And the first delay was uh, right behind front of house. And here you see the total distance of throw is like one hundred and seventy meters. Only indoor, only indoor. So yeah, and the height was about about thirty meters. So it's a bit challenge to do this, but we managed to do this with the main delays and the second delay. So the idea was to point everything where it should be. So don't shoot into something you don't want to hit. That was the main goal for this design. So, yeah. And as we heard during the introduction video, being a distributed system, it allows you to you know to reach those high levels yeah. without waking it has to Also because of the sound restriction that's in Sweden, you know, it's, you cannot play too loud. So you need to know that you have the same pressure everywhere in the room. So yeah, right. that was also one of the goals. Wow. Yeah. So you have the main, you have delay one and you have delay two. So delay one is, taking over from the main and delay two is taking the two top balconies in the end yeah okay. so this is the main theory behind it so what do we give see you a big 
Yeah, here you see an overview of the actual design and deployment. So if we go ahead, we have the main left and right first, which is there. And then they are behind them, there's flown 1100 LFCs and cardioid configuration. And on the floor, you have N fire to su supplement. Yeah, so you have N fired 1100s on the floor to get the throw also on the floor. And you have outer fills, which is there. And then you have the 270 filled behind to get that. Yeah, and then you have delay. Uh, left and right, which also had uh, 1100 LSCs flown in cardio configuration to extend the sub during through the room. And then you have uh, delay left lift and delay right right, which was uh, helping the outer to cover the sides. And then in the end, you have the second delay left center right, which was left was M version of the line and the center was W version of the line. Yeah, and as we saw earlier, the M is the 90 degree version, whereas yeah. the W is the 110, right? Uh, this actually helped us because in the, in the beginning, it was like four hangs of delay in that corner, but changing to WM and because of the TPL3 update, we were able to use only three hangs in the end of the arena to cover the whole thing. Yeah. So how were you able to do this in 36 hours? Well, I, I suppose we're about to discover that. Yeah, <laughs> it was a hard effort from Bright Group crew and Anton also. All planning has to be really good, you know, and everybody, there was like two shift working. Do you have anything to comment here, Anton, on this? Yeah, it was a, it was a big effort from the whole crew. No, but uh, I want the PA regular did an amazing job and, and everybody, but also all the other departments, the lighting crew and the video crew working well. hand in hand to make it easy for everybody. Now talking about video, uh, you guys told me that these were the screens, right? Yeah. Does that yeah. explain the, does that explain why the outfills in the 270s are so high? Yeah, that's a part of the reason uh, for for sight lines from the top bleachers so we don't obstruct the, the video walls. Uh, you yeah. have to remember this was a live stream as well on YouTube and Swedish television and so on. So it has to look good in the camera as well. I see. But also, as Ty said, point speakers where where people are. If we were lower, we would have sh shooted into the roof as well. Yeah, so and also you you need those side hangs need to cover all three uh, balconies on the side. So yeah, in order to get them all the way, it's like remember it's thirty meters up to the top seat of that arena, and that's not only in the back; that's all the way around, and there were people everywhere. Right. Seats. Right. So in order to make this happen, uh, Bright Group makes use of a very convenient system, which consists of DistroRex. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about the um, DistroRex, please? Yeah, they're a, they're a pretty handy thing with uh, everything you need to rig a system and, and drive a PA system inside of DistroRex, as well as cabling for, for for the speakers on top where where does the cabling live on top in uh it's like a yeah there with the mouses right these these buckets these bins yeah, yeah. on top of the of the that's where you have your your multi cores and everything yeah and for this show we had a lot more as well because because the longest cable run was almost 100 meters so it didn't fit for this show but but it was a beginning at least okay well, let's, uh, let's, let's look a little bit closer. Yeah, so you have two galaxies, a UPS switch, an ARM server, distro, everything you need. But what you don't see on this picture is on the back, you have a, a patch bay. So you're able to patch any of the outputs of the galaxies to any of the eight LK37s that's in the back. And that, that helped us a lot because I was able to pre-patch everything in the warehouse before uh, loading right so that was and it, uh, I, we, you can link speakers on the ground instead of the air making it easier to to find faults and and whatnot right and and this workflow allowed you to do all of this in 36 hours all those loudspeakers all those arrays yes i see excellent 
Okay, so uh, why don't we start looking at the main PA? Yeah, the main system, Leo 1100 flown in gradient flown array with the 12 1100s. So yeah, and next slide is all this. Andon was talking about prepping at the warehouse, patching all the racks. So this was the plan he made for the PA riggers. So because we were not on site all the time because all the builder was 24 hours working two shift people. So they had, we had to have a plan about this. So this is what we did. And two also for, for reference, each block reference, here is, yeah. is, is, is one galaxy. Right. So if there's any problem, uh, it was easy to take this piece of paper and, and have a look at the plan. So, so one of these blocks represents a single galaxy with uh, 16 physical outputs. Yes. Yeah. Understood. And if something needed to be changed, it was easy to do that. Now, as, what, I remember, as I remember, it was an online Excel sheet, right? And so we had, so everybody pardon? could, it was an online Excel sheet. This was made of, so if yeah. they did a change during the setup, they could make the change in the Excel sheet and we could see it, everybody could see it, or we can make a change, you know, all this kind of stuff. So that's why it was built so fast. Now I noticed two. that, I noticed that almost every loudspeaker lives on its own unique physical output. Um, wh what is the, what is the, 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 the reason for, for that approach? It was because we wanted to apply LMBC to the system. Just on the mains or was LMBC used throughout the production? It was used throughout the production. And so only on the mains, galaxies or, or also on the Callisto? Also, it was also used on Callisto. Right, Callisto. So, so, so LMBC all throughout. Yeah. Amazing. That's, yeah. Okay. So let's look, um, let's look at uh, you know, the galaxy that had the front fills and, and, and more on them. Yeah, so for front fills, we had double stacks of Leopard across the stage. And the front fill galaxies was also uh, driving the N Fire 1100 on the floor, as you see. And here you see additional outputs with UBQ, UBJ, and GM1P. But we didn't use those uh, because it was not needed. So, yeah. So, so, so that's one of those instances where you, you have to yeah. adapt on site. You have to adapt on site also because the build up was pretty, pretty fast. So, we have to take the decision on site that. Maybe it cannot be here where we wanted it to be, but is this cover is good enough? You know, or there was also a lot of pyro. Yeah. Uh, and things changed, everywhere. things changed a bit. The barricade was a bit further from the downstage edge than, than yeah. the plan from the beginning. And, all yeah, of and that. suddenly, and suddenly there was pyro where the front wheels should be, you know, all this, all these kind of stuff during the setup, you know, but everything went good. Everybody get on a compromise. So, yeah. Excellent. So we were we were prepared. We had extra outputs for everything, you know, all this kind of stuff. Okay. Can you so tell us a little Leo bit about line, those yeah. those outfills in those two seventies? The Leo Leo outfill was a mix of Leo with underhang lion. As you see, uh, six underhang lion, and that's a mix of M and W lion. And you have the two seventy, which is the leopard system that consists of twenty two leopards for each hang. Wow. So quite a big leopard hang. <laughs> And it's, you see the same say, the, only 22 only 22 i think it's the maximum that i don't know maybe i never seen a bigger leopard array before but it sounded really good the leopard array so, yeah. to be frank all our almost all our hangs were maximum yeah. amount of boxes so right yeah yeah but I, uh, for me the leopards everything was great but the leopard it was really impressive it packs a punch yeah. Now, as I'm looking at these uh, Excel sheets, I notice that sometimes you use a Y split. I take it that you use a Y split in the in, in the distros, and sometimes I see that you just use a link cable and and daisy chain from loudspeaker to loudspeaker. Is that a do I see that correctly? Yeah, sometimes it's it's easier to just split it at the speaker because. We had three cables going up, but we needed more. We had more boxes than outputs 
mm-hmm. in the air. So instead of drawing an extra cable all the way, like let's say 75 meters up, we just link some of them right at the speakers. So that's why you see why it's all linked from something, you know, all this kind of I stuff. See. Yeah. So here we see the delay, the first delay, that is to say. First delay, that's the extension of the main system here. And it's a Lion M only with additional nine pieces of 1100 flown in gradient configuration card rate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And that's, that was really good. It was just, just for extending the sub, everything to the back of the wall. So yeah. Right. Okay. So and the, again, you see the right. And again, you see the patch for the first delay, and the delay left left and delay subs, which is a little bit the same way. You see something is linked, something is you know all this kind of stuff. Now there was also a, a second line of delays, if I'm if I'm yeah. correctly. That's the high delay, the left center right, which was run on Callistos, on this occasion. So yeah. And it's 16 lines, uh, left was 16 line M's, the center was 16 line W's, and the right was 16 line M's, so yeah. Correct, these, these, were, these were the three arrays that initially wanted to do with four, but thanks yeah. to the W, you could get away yeah. with three. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and all this, all this fiddling around with all this kind of stuff actually ended out that right group could do the show with only indoor equipment. They didn't sub rent anything. So that was also one of the goals. So the entire bride group that provided yeah. all of the equipment that we've seen so far. Yeah, no That's sub renting. Nice. So, yeah. so um, earlier it was mentioned that all of this was running on uh, Milan AVB. So can you tell us a little bit about the network? Yeah, let's look at the network. So here you have an overview of the whole network we used. And you see uh, in the middle, you see the front of house area, which is the heart of the system where everything runs from. So, yeah, uh, and you see house left and house right was this. And you see delay house left and the delay house right. Okay. This was how the system was built. So front of house is the heart of the system. Everything runs from front of house. Well, maybe we should zoom in a little bit. Why don't we start yeah. with, the, um, with the front of house drive racks? Yeah. Anto, this is the front. Yeah. Right. I was just about to ask, can you tell us what we see here? Because it looks um, looks very uh, interesting. Maybe Anton is better at explaining what this is. Yeah, this is front of house racks uh, in two versions. Uh, one with two galaxies in it and one with one and the radio mics for for aligning and tuning the system and and yeah everything you need to to make a show happen it looks like i also see ups is that correctly yeah yeah the the left one has one ups it is one ups for uh, for each galaxy and and um and do the dual racks get used for larger productions and the and the single racks for smaller productions or is there a different uh decision making process at play uh, mostly like that, yeah, I would say. Okay. And so we here, use we see, uh, here we see that close-up of, of what um, ties Nens to the uh, heart of the network. So, so what do we see here? See the front of house set up, there's like two switches, A and B network, primary and secondary switch. And you see the blue line and the red bold line is like the fiber connections going from front of house to house left and right and to delay house left and right. And then you have the primary secondary galaxy and a backup galaxy that's connected to the switches with CAT5. So the, the bolt lines that are connected to SFP, these are the fiber, the fiber. These are the fiber connections. Yes. Right. That's the main road of the system, if you can. Okay. And, and then from the switches to the galaxies in the rack, that is all CAT cable. That's all CAT cables. Okay. And it's two separate networks doing redundancy. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Hey, it's me. In your natural habitat. Yeah, that's my suit. But yeah, this, this is me prepping the show, actually. And uh, 
yeah, prepping the galaxies, labeling, anything, making it happen in such a short time frame. But one of the really great things with this network for me is like, I, right behind me, I had all the distros, all, the whole network connected and I tried it and tried the redundancy and stuff. And then on site to be able to, without a worry, connect parts of the system, uh, not needing to connect everything at the same time and just things popping up and yeah, it's, it's great. Now I see two instances of Compass running. Uh, is that the same instance or, or is there something else going on here? No, it's two, two different. I'm not really sure about the, the versions, but on the big screen is Compass 4. Okay. Oh. So for the Galileo Galaxy devices? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we were in that 4.6.0, I think, that's running the Milan. Yeah, stuff. so that uh, con yeah. controls all the galaxies. And on my left, I have a Compass 3 point something. Thais probably knows, but to, to yeah. control the, all the Callistos. Okay. Because they were all in the same network. And if I look, I also see that um, some some uh, delay integration or product integration has been activated. Has product integration or delay integration, which is a part of product integration, has that been used throughout the production as well? Yes, on every output. Excellent. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, network. We just discussed the um, drive racks at front of house. Um, can you tell us anything about the top left section of the um, of the network? Yeah. Let's have a closer look to this. And this is the same. You see the fiber come in, and it's like two distro racks, as you saw Anton explain before. So two switches in each rack and connected by fiber. And you see got two galaxies in each distro rack connected to the switches with Cat5. So you had a galaxy with main, galaxy with LOC flown plus the sender. You had outfield, in fire, front fill. And then you see the left bottom corner you see the 270 hang that was running off a of Callisto and that was just connected to the A network for control of the Callisto. It got a audio feed from a galaxy nearby. So yeah. Right. So yeah we need to remind ourselves that we're looking at data connections and and, yeah. and uh and not only data connections. Right. right. Yeah. Excellent. So. Um House right is of course the same because it was a symmetrical uh, approach to my understanding. Yeah. Everything was running from front of house to house right and then to house left, that's the only thing. Okay. And then we have delay house left, which actually was placed right behind front of house. So again, connected via fiber from front of house. It's a little bit the same. You go into the first distro rack and connect to the next one and connect to the next one with fiber connection and all galaxies are connected to the switches with cat5 so delay was four distal racks so this is the left side of it and we had the delay two was driven by callisto so again it was connected to the a network for control of the callisto and yeah it's it's it's, it's simply the same and from my point of view to make this network there it was to simplify it as much as possible so if there was an issue, it was pretty easy to find it. So I was, about to, view, say, I was about to say it pretty much looks plug and play. Yeah, it should be, my point of view, it should be easy to do it. And it was easy because it was just go from this rack to this rack and then connect, boom, it's there. So yeah, okay. put on an extra rack, it popped up, you know, all this during the build up, you know, they put on one rack, you can start working on that, and then it connected the next one, and then it just pops up. No no problem, everything connected, you know, yeah. It's now, the idea. in the corner of my eye, we have a question that you might be able to address, and if not, by all means, let us know. But um, Ahmed is wondering whether any uh, EQ starting points were used during the production. Uh, no. no. No EQ, EQ starting, starting points. points. Okay. So I take it that um, what, what, what we just saw for delays house left, that this is also the case for uh, delays house right, being a symmetrical, uh, a symmetrical approach, right? Yeah. Okay. I did the same. So that explains the um, deployment using the distro Rex, um, which uh, expedited the process, made it possible to do it in 36 hours. All of it was run mm -hmm. 
fully redundant on a Milan AVB uh, network. First time, uh, first time ever, to my understanding. Um, yeah. And and that gets you the following uh, predictions. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here? We're seeing a prediction one octet four kilohertz free to be per division, but it's this prediction is without the two seventy hang. Just to be clear on that. And this was basically the end of it or the end design. And what you see in the middle between the two mains, you see a dead area. And this is completely on purpose because the show had a big, yeah, I'm draw that. the show had a big catwalk going out there. So we didn't want to have that much audio spilling into that catwalk. Oh, there you so see, right. Yeah. So here you see the catwalk, the pretty, pretty big catwalk. And actually the mains just hit right in front of the catwalk. So yeah, yeah for those, for those that are looking, you know, that, that's where they are. Yeah, yeah. The, catwalk, the catwalk was 20 plus meters. I, wow. Yeah. It was pretty big. <laughs> and a lot of the show was on the catwalk also. Yeah. So here you see it from the top view. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, well, that that you know get, gives a, a good impression. Um, why don't we finish with some photos um, before we go to Q and A, um, and um, and get a, a sense of of wow, look at that. Uh, just give you a clue about how big this arena is. This is taken from the top balcony, on the side. Pretty big. Okay. Here you can see the depth of that catwalk once once again. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's actually the Leo hitting out there. So yeah. Sorry? It was the Leo, you know, the you see a Leo stack with two lion underhang and the lion was taking the first part of it and the Leo was hitting right in front of the catwalk so it works out ah i see i see what it is that you're you're trying to say so so the bottom leo touches down yeah. where the catwalk stops yeah and then you have your you have your 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 lions taking care of the people uh that live next to the catwalk is, yeah. is this what you're that was, that was their goal to achieve that goal okay understood <laughs> And of course, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, there was pyro and, and more. Yeah. Everything you can imagine about pyro was there. Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much, Anton, a freelance system technician who was there on behalf of the bride, bride group, I take it? Yes. Thank, thank you, you very much for, for, for uh, joining us uh, on this interesting journey of, uh, of one of the first major uh, projects that use Milan AVB throughout. Um, much appreciated. Same goes for Thijs, fellow Meyerson colleague. Thank you for you as well. And um, are you guys okay if, if we take a look at the chat and, and see if we can address some of the comments or yeah, questions? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, Let's 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 have a look at the at the at the um, at the questions. So the person that asked um, whether we were using starting points for all the rigs, um, can you explain um, what what could have been a possible cause or the, the the politics involved in why it was used or not? We didn't use the starting points because we wanted to do something else and try try stuff also. Okay. Well, yeah, we had time. So actually, Sorry? What do you say? Yeah, actually the build up on was ahead of schedule, so we had time. Right. To try, yeah. try some things out. Understood. And then we have um we have a question how the primary and secondary galaxies were fed with signal. Well, that's, that's where the AES3 edition comes into the equation, right? If we look at those drive racks, they are basically your, your A to D or D to D converters. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. 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 So, so let me see if I can go back quickly to that. Um, if I can share my screen once more and co 
go quickly back. I am still sharing my screen um, to that that slide because that was basically uh, the ingress point, the ingress point where the um, the uh, consoles the consoles were connected, right? Yeah, yeah. we we got um, two AES feeds from 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 the main console that makes the the live act a main and a spare into the dry rack and a and a AES feed from from the console that makes the DJ acts as well. Into right. One of these. Yeah. So so in in our ecosystem we refer to this as the master. Uh, Galaxy devices, and then in all the distro racks, we have the so-called satellite Galaxy devices. But this yeah. is basically where all the audio coming from front of house is pushed onto the network. That that happens here. The left one on the in the double rack. Is right. The master. Okay. Understood. Uh, I hope that that answers the uh, question of uh, the uh, person that asked that question on the chat. Um, let's see if there are any other questions at this point. Um, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, it looks like the chat is cooling down in which case, uh, I think we've come to the end of a very exciting case study. Um, and that means that, um, I would like to thank Anton and Thijs again um, for uh, joining us today as guest lecturers and uh, telling us about this very interesting project. And um, for those that want to know more about Milan AVB, uh, earlier this week, we had a, a very exciting uh, presentation of our, um, of Richard Bug who uh, discussed Milan AVB at great length. So for those that are more interested in the technology that was used during this project, be sure to watch uh, that webinar, which you can also find together with a recording later today of this particular webinar. You can find Richard's webinar uh, on the uh, Thinking Sound YouTube channel. There's also a document that you can read, which is the uh, Meyer Sound AVB networking guide, which can be found at the website that also explains uh, a lot of the uh, topics uh, that Richard uh, touches, including redundancy, cable redundancy, switch redundancy, uh, all of those topics are also addressed in that particular document. And that means that we've come to the end of another uh, Myerson webinar. Thank you for joining us. This also goes for the people that are looking uh, at the simulcast in the Myerson User Community Facebook group. Please stay safe and healthy, everyone and having a very, 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 very nice weekend. Bye-bye.